Hi everyone. Welcome back for your next Cooking Matters lesson. Remember, my name is Emily if you've never seen these videos before, and if you have seen these videos before, I hope that you've been making some of the recipes and talking to your family about the things you've been learning. So let's review what we've learned so far. Hmm, everybody think for a second. What have we talked about in all of the lessons that you've watched prior to this one? That's right. We've talked about the colors of fruits and vegetables and why they're important. We've talked about how plants grow, and we've talked about the different parts of the plants that we eat. We've talked about different food groups. We've talked about my plate, and we've talked about measuring. We've talked about a lot of things. So today, we're going to be learning how to read a recipe and also learning how to make a well-balanced snack. Let's get started. So let's talk about what good chefs do. Good chefs read the entire recipe together first. The reason you want to read the entire recipe first is you do not want to be surprised halfway through if you don't have an ingredient or a tool that you need. You need to have a plan for attack before you begin. Good chefs ask questions if they don't understand something. You might be wondering what a measurement is or what a certain abbreviation is or maybe what tool to use. So you always ask questions before you continue on. Sometimes you might even have to use the internet to look things up. The next thing we do is we always wash our hands. So everybody put your hands together like this. We are going to do a demonstration. So you first turn the water on, nice lukewarm water. I need you to get your hands wet. Always get them wet first. Then get a couple pumps of soap and you wanna start lathering that around your hands. You'll want to get your thumbs. You'll want to get your fingers in between. So you want to rub like this because the friction is what helps get some of those germs off. So you're rubbing in between like this. Don't forget the backs of your hands and very, very, very importantly, your fingertips because your fingertips and fingernails can harbor a lot of bacteria. You really want to make sure you scratch at those palms to get those fingertips clean. Then give it one more once over. Make sure put it under that warm water again and really rinse them well. As you can see, I have some things on my wrist. I really should have pushed those up in the beginning if I had real water running so I could also kind of wash my wrists a little bit as well. All right, so good chefs, they always wash their hands. Once their hands are clean, they do not touch their body, their clothes, their hair, their face. And if they touch too many cooking utensils, cabinets or things like that, make sure you wash your hands often. Next, we gather all of our ingredients before we start. That includes all of your equipment. That's when you'll notice if you're missing something. And that's also if you have really dirty hands, let's say you've been, I don't know, putting yogurt on a pizza like we did last class and I had yogurt on my hands and then I opened up a cabinet, I'm going to make a mess. So get it all out, get it all ready. The next step is to rinse all of your fruits and vegetables and canned items. We rinse our fruits and vegetables because of bacteria and germs that might get on these things at the store, on the farm, when they're handled. And we rinse our canned items because a lot of times canned items can have excess salt and sugar. We don't need that extra salt and sugar, so rinse them and you'll get rid of the excess. Then you cook it up. You enjoy, you have fun, you cook, you learn. And after you cook, of course we need to clean. I suggest cleaning as you go. So as you use something, put it back in the fridge. As you use a tool, if you have a dishwasher, put it directly in or put it in a sink full of soapy water. Get a jump start so you don't have the burden of cleaning up everything at the end. And lastly, of course, we eat all together. Have a family meal together. Have, have a, a, a Zoom meal with your family or your friends. Eat together with someone and share the beautiful food you have created. So now we need to talk about actually reading our recipe. So as you can see, today we are going to be making mini pizzas. And if you think back to the things that I just went through with you, the first thing I need to do is I need to read through this entire recipe. I need to understand it and I need to make sure I have all the ingredients. So let's check it out. It says it serves six, two muffin halves per serving. Well, I'm the only one home right now, so I'm probably just going to make one. So I need to keep that in mind. When I go through all of these ingredients, I'm going to have to divide by six. Oh boy. So now there's math involved. Oh, whew, 
I'm gonna have to do some thinking. It says it takes 25 minutes to cook. Well, I'm sorry, 25 minutes to prep, 25 minutes to cook. I need to make sure I have that much time. So, well, you know what? I'm not going anywhere, so I have time. But you always wanna make sure that you have the time to commit to what you're cooking. Let's check out the ingredients to make sure I have what I need. It says that I need one red or green bell pepper. I know that I have that. It says that I need button mushrooms, chunk part skim mozzarella cheese. I have shredded cheese, but I think that will do. English muffins, canola oil, oregano, basil, and tomato sauce. It says I can also get turkey pepperoni if I want. I actually, believe it or not, have all of these items. But if I didn't have all of these items, I could easily make substitutions. If I didn't have pizza sauce, I could use spaghetti sauce. If I didn't have green bell peppers, I could use red ones. I could use onions instead of mushrooms. I could use sausage instead of pepperoni. I can use whatever I want. But think back to the last lesson, we wanna make sure it's colorful. So try to stick to those colorful fruits and vegetables if possible. My materials. I need a baking sheet and a box grater, a can opener and a colander, a cutting board and a large skillet, measuring spoons, medium bowl, sharp knife, and small bowl. Because I work in my kitchen a lot, I know I have all of that, but ask your parents for help locating these items and get them ready before you start. Let's check out what we actually have to do. So it says to have adults helped with anything marked with this symbol. So there might be things that you need to get some help with at home, or at least permission to do from your parents. Preheat the oven to 450. We'll take care of that when we're cooking, but you always wanna make sure that's step number one so the oven is hot. You want to rinse all of your produce. Number three, remove the core and cut the pepper. We're going to slice it thin. We'll slice our mushrooms, remove the core, and dice the tomato. I guess I missed tomato when I said that earlier, but I also have one of those. We'll split our English muffin in half. We'll put them on a baking sheet and we're going to bake until the edges are lightly browned. That way the sauce doesn't make it soggy. And then we're going to heat some oil in a skillet and we'll put the peppers and mushrooms in and we'll cook them for about five minutes. That way they'll get nice and soft and their beautiful flavor will come out. We'll transfer those veggies to a small bowl. We'll add the tomatoes and we'll stir. We'll add in our spices. And then when the muffins are slightly browned, we're going to put a little bit of sauce on each one. We'll layer our veggies on the sauce, and then it looks like we'll put the cheese on after that. We'll bake the muffins until the cheese is melted and bubbly for about six to eight minutes, and then we'll let them cool for two minutes before serving. Well, that sounds easy enough. I think I have a pretty good understanding of what I'm doing. And I know that this particular snack or meal covers a lot of food groups. Can you guess which ones? You're right could be fruits, vegetables, grains, proteins, and dairy. Interesting, it all depends on what you put on your pizza. The more food groups, the healthier and more well-balanced the meal. All right, I've collected all of my ingredients. I have it all out so I know that I have everything I need. But remember, you can modify as much as you'd like. I had to use spaghetti sauce because I actually don't have any pizza sauce. I don't have canola oil, so I'm using this avocado oil that I have. I decided I'd add some salami and spinach to my pizza as well. But remember, it's up to you. All right, first things first, I need to preheat my oven to 450 degrees. So now is a really great time to learn how to work your oven with your parents. Ask them for help. On my oven, I hit bake, I hit 450 degrees, and then I hit start. The oven will now preheat while we work on everything else. Number two in my recipe is to rinse my produce. So I'm gonna shift your view a little bit all the way over to the sink. And I'll be bringing over my pepper, my tomato, and my mushrooms, my three pieces of produce that need to be washed. When I am washing produce, I make sure that I give it a really, really good wash, really kind of scrub it with my fingers. You could also use a brush if you would like. So my pepper's done. I always remove stickers if I need to as well. The sticker and rinse all of my mushrooms. Make sure I get all of that dirt. All right, so I have my- All right, my next step is to remove the core from the bell pepper. So if you remember from lesson number one, you're going to use your bear claw and your sawing motion 
You're going to cut the top of the pepper off. You will reach in, take out the core and any leftover seeds. Then you need to create more flat surfaces. So turn it onto its flat surface here. Using that bear claw, go ahead and cut down to create more flat surfaces. And where I'm only making one pizza, that's where I have to turn it, make it a little easier for myself. I'm only going to cut up a small piece of pepper, but I am going to use some dicing. That way I can have small, uniform sized pieces. So we'll dice up that pepper that I'm using. All right, and I'll just push that to the side. And next we need to dice up our mushroom. So I will create that flat surface. I will go ahead and cut my mushroom up. And mushroom is one of my favorite things. If it's something you don't like, I encourage you to continue trying it until you do like it. So I'm actually gonna cut up both of my mushrooms so I can have a little bit extra on my pizza. All right, my mushroom is cut up. I am now going to core my tomato. One way you can do it is you can very, very safely cut down like this to pop the core out, or you can cut it like you might cut an apple. I prefer to cut it this way. I will then cut to create a flat surface. And again, not going to use a whole tomato because I am not going to be making that many pizzas. I will probably just be making, or using, I'm sorry, about a quarter of a tomato. I'm going to chop that up and push that also to where my ingredients go. My next step is to grate the cheese, but guess what? I happen to have cheese that's already grated, so I can skip that step. My next step after that is to split my English muffin in half. So I will go ahead and very carefully, keeping my fingers out of the way, I will cut this English muffin in half. It says to lightly toast it, so I will put it on my tray and I will get it put into the oven. I don't know if you can see this, looks like you might be able to, for just 10 minutes. So I'll go ahead and set a 10 minute timer. All right, while that is cooking, it says I need to actually cook my vegetables in a skillet. I'm going to show you how to do that, but you do not have to do that. You can put them on raw if you would rather. So I will get a small pan and I'll get it onto my burner making sure that the handle is not facing out. I'm going to use, I think it called for, how much oil, let's double check, one tablespoon. So what I'll do is, I think actually I'm just going to guess, I'm not going to use a full tablespoon. I'm just going to do a little bit to lightly coat that pan. I will then drop my peppers and my mushrooms in. The tomatoes don't go in here, the tomatoes are for after. Drop in my ingredients here, and I'm actually going to be adding my spinach in as well, so I can soften that up a little bit. I could put that on raw, but I figure I'll just toss it right in here. I'll grab a spatula, and I'll wait until that starts to sizzle. As you can see, my vegetables are sauteing up nicely. They're very fragrant. They're going to make for a great addition to my pizza. I'll give these about one more minute, and I think they will be done. All right, we are on our next step in the recipe. It tells me to remove my veggies from the pan so they don't continue cooking. Make sure you take that pan off of the hot burner as well. And it says to add my tomatoes. So go ahead and add my tomatoes in and I'll mix it up with a spoon. I have a beautiful, beautiful vegetable mixture here to add to my pizza. All right, so our pizzas can come out of the oven now. They have crisped up nicely. So I'm going to leave them right on the pan. Never put a hot pan on a countertop, but you can place it on a stove if the burner is no longer hot. So I'll be placing this right here and I will be using some of my sauce. And it says specific measurements, but you can just eyeball it if you want to. And it also asks me to put my spices in here, but since I'm using a spaghetti sauce that already has spices, I don't feel the need to add more just yet. So I will spread my sauce around on my pizza. I'm gonna slide it over here so you can see it. Just put it on a little towel, on a pot plate I mean. All right, now it's time to put on my beautiful vegetables. I'm noticing I have yellow, green, red, 
all kinds of good colors. If you think back to last lesson, we talked about why it's so important to eat such a variety of colors. And I might not be able to fit all of this on here, but I'm going to do my best. All right, our next step is to add our cheese. So I'll go ahead and add on the cheese to the top of our pizza. And this makes for a really good snack or a really good meal, either way. And I'm going to add on, I think just one piece of salami since they're big to each. And I'm going to choose to put my spices on the top. So here's my oregano and here is my basil. All right, we'll get these back into the oven for four to five minutes and let's check them out when they're done. Now that's a good looking pizza. I hope that you're able to make some type of English muffin pizza at your house. Remember, you can modify it all you need to and make it exactly what you want it to be. Make sure you use a variety of colors and ask your parents for help when needed. And I hope you enjoy your well-balanced meal. All right, everyone, it's time for some physical activity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an obstacle course around my house. I'm just going to start running and see what happens. You can try it at home. Let's go. Running across my front lawn, I think first I have this really long fence. I think that every three panels I'm going to run and every one panel after that I'll walk. So run and now we'll walk. And we'll run and walk and run and walk and run and walk. And run at the end of the fence. Let's see what's next. Ooh, there's a hose on the ground. Don't step on the hose. A wagon, jump over it. Ooh, I see some stairs. Let's go up them. Oh, these are big stairs. All right, and down we go. Scotch. Ooh, let me tightrope the shadow. Ooh, there's some bees right there. I better get going faster. And I'll go check the mail. Oh man. And as fast as I can, back to the house. Home.